Hey, it's Dougie from Valto, and we are the UK's Microsoft 365 tenant to tenant migration experts. In this video, I'm going to be telling you about the five most common reasons that we see a tenant to tenant migration failing, and often is the core reasons of why they get referred to us to fix. So let's jump in and take a look. The first one is inadequate planning. Often there's overlooked dependencies, things like SharePoint integrations that just haven't been considered. It might be that SharePoint is integrated into a third party CRM system um, like Salesforce or maybe internally to Dynamics 365. There could be loads of things that there are integrations that are just not being considered. It might be that there's power platform solutions such as Power Apps for mobile apps or even Power Automate for automated workflows, which again, haven't been considered and only raise their head after the migration has taken place. Sometimes it might just be that there are other apps inside of Microsoft 365, which are commonly being used like Planner for project management or Stream, which has got video content inside of it, which again, hasn't been considered as part of this migration. Another common thing which is not considered during the planning stage is the licenses which are required. Now, typically licenses um, will be the same from your source destination tenant to um, the target destination tenant. However, you might need more licenses if you're merging, say, two companies together um, and you need more. But essentially, you could do with auditing what licenses you need. Now, Valto do offer a free uh, license audit. So if that's something of interest, you can get in contact with us using the link in the description below. The second thing that we often see um, as being a mistake is um, the security and compliance considerations. Now, this is where not reviewing things like security policies, compliance settings can really make a tenant to tenant migration become unstuck. It might be that there's sensitivity labels which are, have been previously being used for things like internal only or sensitive related data which have not been set up and configured properly on the new target tenant. It could be retention labels, so potentially you've got certain information like finance information which has to be retained for say seven years, which again, unless you know that that exists and you've looked for it and you've checked for it, um, you might not necessarily have set up and configured that on the new tenant. It could be multi-factor authentication or even conditional access policies. So certain people are allowed to access under very specific rules, which again may need to be reconfigured on the tenant uh, that you're migrating to. Other things as well are things like data residency requirements. So where data lives, depending on the countries that people are using it. The next common mistake is identity and access related issues. This is overlooking the complexities of entra related identity syncing, potentially not even having any planned downtime for impact on the end users whilst these syncs are taking place. Potentially there's guest or external user access that was previously given to a uh, your previous Microsoft 365 tenant that again needs to be reconfigured. It could be SharePoint permissions. So if you've got an intranet, Microsoft Teams, team sites, communication sites, hub sites, again, you need to consider what the levels of access and permissions and controls that were put in place to govern your document management platforms. And also making sure that you actually have some post-migration checks Again, some very common things which we see take place is that migrations happen and then they're not followed up with proper uh, post-migrational checks to ensure everything has migrated successfully and everyone has the right level of access to it. Often we would advise that there is a simulated migration which takes place. So finding all the different things which are going to be included in the scope of your migration at the very early stages, and then testing some migrations, what happens when it's migrated? Because no migration is flawless. There's potential that documents or data could be lost during migrations. So it's important you have a backup of the original data. It could be corrupted. 
it just might not necessarily come across the way you're expecting, especially when you're looking at migrating not just documents and emails, but apps and other types of data. So simulating your migrations is really important. And we would also recommend a potential guinea pig migration, which is where we choose one particular department or area of the organization and do a full migration of everything that they have into the new tenant to check that everything works um, and, and everything has gone smoothly to plan. We can then use any learnings from any of the issues that were uncovered during that migration to apply that as a blueprint to the wider organization migration. The fourth most common thing that we see as a failure um, for a lot of tenant to tenant migrations um, that get referred to us relates to poor data migration strategy. Now, this includes a lot of things, but the key things is not accounting for throttling limits. Now, one of the things that can almost trick you and bring you into a false sense of security is during the test migrational phase, if you want to call it that, you might not hit throttling issues, which you might get on a much larger migration. So we tend to advise that migrations are batched, so they're put together in uh, specific sizes so that you know when you're migrating what types of potential slowdowns, throttling, thresholds that you could potentially hit. And that's for things like exchange, so emails, but also SharePoint documents as well will potentially hit thresholds and throttling as you're migrating. Um, the other thing which I want to talk about a bit on the poor data migration uh, strategy element is migrating unnecessary data. So something we see a lot of is people going unstuck or feeling like their migration is this mammoth task because they've not properly cleansed the data that they have and looked at ways of archiving. So there's multiple different strategies for archiving data and documents. Um, but actually migrating everything across, I've seen a lot of people go for approach of migrate everything to the new tenant and then dish it out afterwards and archive it afterwards. And the problem with that is you do hit a lot of thresholds, you do a lot of throttling, and a lot of issues, and you're much better to cleanse the documents where they originally live and then move them across afterwards. And the final um, point that I want to make about the tenant to tenant migration mistakes is around bad communication and support. Now, as I mentioned earlier, sometimes people even forget to have a downtime booked in. And even if they did, I've seen it before where the IT departments um, or the contractor that's brought in to handle this tenant to tenant migration has expected downtime, but just not communicated it to all of the end users and stakeholders of the tenant to tenant migration. So what we advise is as early as possible that you allow people to understand what it is that's going to change. So is it going to be their email address and login details credentials, where they go inside of SharePoint and Teams and things like that if potential areas are being merged together? Um, often we see that sometimes no training at all takes place, but we would advise definitely that there would be some level of training. Now, it depends entirely on um, your kind of setup, your requirements. If you have trainers in-house, we can provide train-the-trainer type of training we can provide end user training we can also provide snippet videos as well which often prove to be very useful as part of the adoption journey as people can return back to a short video to say hey you no longer log in via this you log in via this you no longer find your documents here you find them there those types of content can often be very beneficial to users during that adoption stage i hope you found this video useful I must let you know that we do offer a free consultation to talk to you about your tenant to tenant migration, any possible challenges that you might have. And we also offer a fixed price, um, which is a no obligation quote, to actually deliver the full tenant to tenant migration from end to end, from the very beginning of the planning and scoping, all the way through the technical delivery to the adoption and the training and support packages at the end. If you enjoyed this video, give us a like. Any questions you can drop in the comments feed below. You can contact us using the link in the description below and subscribe for more Microsoft related content. Thank you.